Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today we're going to play a tune called Bees Wing. <laughs> Beeswing is a fascinating tune. It's a hornpipe written by the 19th century uh, Tyneside fiddler James Hill. He was known as the Hornpipe Paganini. Hornpipes were his speciality and he wrote a lot of them, which we still play. Um, in Tyneside, the Northumbrian pipes are an important instrument and they play flat keys and this is in B flat. So it's quite a challenging tune and um, People like James Hill played in pubs uh, for dancing, but also for showing off. And his tunes were, some of them were very flashy indeed. And uh, this particular one is also used as a, uh, an American old time contest tune. Um, and it's named after, incidentally, uh, Beeswing was a, a champion racehorse at the time. Let's first of all look at the key of B flat, because it's a, a key that a lot of people won't have come across very much. So put your first finger on the B flat and um, to start with let's put keep it also on the F so it's like on two notes. So the fingering is the same on the A string as the E string and let's just try going down. So we're going from first finger open three two First finger down against the notes. Let's go from the bottom to the top. Notice that my fingers, as they go up, one, two, three, four, are all staying down. And this is a, a, a very good general principle that as fingers go down, they stay down until you need them off. And then you take them off one by one. And that helps to keep everything in tune. So if you're not familiar with this key, then I would suggest spending quite a lot of time just practicing that fingering before you start the tune. Okay, let's look at the A section. So there's really nothing easy about this. Uh, you've got a lot of string crossing apart from anything else. That first phrase, it's very useful to keep your first finger across both notes. So the first finger hasn't moved. Now it comes off. So put your second finger down. And then take it off again to put your third down. And first finger goes down on the E flat and the B flat. Comes off. Then we got a triplet. And I'm bowing these triplets. I'm definitely not going to try and do them separate. And here's probably the hardest bit of the lot. So first finger on across note, both notes again. And it's staying on for those all four. Take it off. Here, first finger goes on both notes. And it stays on for that, then comes off. And then it goes on the E flat and the B flat. And what's really hard of, about this is the bowing. I think I do it pretty well all separate. Um, there may be an easy way of doing this, which I haven't yet discovered. You could try slurring in pairs. Um, I think slurring four notes together doesn't work. So try separate bows. And I do that little thing. 
first finger under the C, uh, doing an E flat, and an open D under the B flat. So let's do all of that section again. One, two, three. Notice that as you're doing that long string of separate bows, then you're going to gradually be moving down. So the shorter your bows, the better. So I've moved about nine inches during the course of that. Uh, if you find yourself getting to the tip in only uh, one bar, then obviously you're going to have to uh, reassess how you're approaching it. Okay, uh, B section. So, uh, first finger goes down again, across two strings, and stays there all, all, for all of that bar. First finger again, on two strings. First finger is down across both strings. Now here I've got a different bowing approach, uh, a one and three. Um, which I'm doing on the second half of each bar. So that will solve a lot of the problem of, um, of ending up towards the tip. So I'll just do that part again. Okay, let's do all of that section a little bit faster. One, two, three, four. Okay, now I just want to show you a little variation and um, I, I told you that this is used as a contest tune in America sometimes and I looked at a Casey Willis uh, video of this because he always has a good take on any, any of these tunes and uh, I have to say I laughed out loud when I saw what he did as a variation which is... <laughs> he does that which it happens in both sections. So what's happening is an arpeggio on the B flat. This is instead of it does. And I think I you would either bow it as like that or like that. Uh, I think doing six notes in one bow is the best approach. And I would play these notes as short as humanly possible and play them light and fairly quiet. So if you're going to try and do if you're going to try and press down hard and play them all really loud and clean, I think you're going to find them a lot harder than than that, which is much lighter. So I'm going to play you the whole tune and I will attempt um, as a variation to do those <laughs> amazing triplets. Uh, let's see how it goes.
if you've watched uh, School of Rock, you'll know there's such a thing as a face melter, which is basically when a, a, um, a phrase of music is so passionate or difficult that your, f your face <laughs> goes crazy. And um, uh, I tr it's difficult to know whether or not you should kind of uh, allow your face to do whatever it wants to do at that point, or whether you should, uh, as is usually my thing, uh, pretend that you're doing the ironing and <laughs> allow nothing to happen on the face whatsoever. But this is such a, a startling little thing that I think um, people like to see a look of shock or, or consternation or, or passion in your face as you're attempting one of these. So that is what you really would call a face melter. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. If you like a copy of the sheet music for this, then do subscribe to the channel and send me an email. If you'd like to get hold of all of my PDFs in one go, you can do that by joining me on Patreon. And it's Patreon that keeps all these videos coming. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.